Good morning everybody. So today's video we want to show you basically um, installing the solar modules on the roof. You'll see us coming down the driveway here with the tractor with a pallet of modules. I, I can't remember exactly how many is on here. I think 30 and uh, it's right at the weight limit of the tractor. You'll notice the back tires are barely touching the ground so we're going a little slow taking it easy. I'm um, getting these down to get ready to put up. But basically what we're doing is we're expanding our system to do some testing on some new charge controllers, some new 600 volt charge controllers. Uh, basically have the ability to drop in a different charge controller here there and do some testing. So We're up on the roof now laying out our first set of rails trying to make sure we're staying away from the edge of the roof enough to get up and down if we want to etc. Um, we're looking for the purlings. Underneath the metal roof there's 2x4s going side to side so we want to line up with those. And what we're doing is we're just drilling a pilot hole in the roof and we're siliconing it really well and leg bolting the iron ridge foot right to the metal roof. Um, we find that works very well on metal roofing. Use a good quality silicone. We've never had any trouble. If we're doing an asphalt roof we could you know, use some flashing kits that were made for that. There are a lot of different attachment methods you can use on metal roofing as well if you don't want to do this. But we're doing, you know, putting up our feet and Sue's going to get the rails for me here in a minute so I can go ahead and put the rails on the roof. And handing me up the broom, you'll notice I, I do a lot of sweeping as we go. Um, up and down there's a lot of dirt on the roof and it's a 512 pitch. It's a little slippery. I mean it's only a six foot drop on the bottom end when you fall off but you get up a lot of speed going down that long roof so not, not the funnest thing to do I don't believe. Haven't tried it yet and I don't recommend that uh, you try it. So this system essentially is going to comprise of a lot of microinverters and a lot of DC coupled for testing charge controllers. Uh, total wattage I think if I remember right is around 15 kilowatts of installed PV. You'll see more of that as we go on with this series uh, you, you know, as, we, as we progress. This one was really just installing the modules on the roof. And there's a lot of good videos on installing all of this stuff. So we didn't really want to go down into the weeds on a three-hour video on how to actually put the leg bolts in and connect the Iron Ridge rail and use a UFO bolt for example. We just kind of want to give you an overview of what we're doing and uh, show you in kind of a fast-forwarded pace what's going on here. It's kind of a nice day in November. I believe it was somewhere in the 50 degree range if I remember right and sunny. You'll notice we do have a wood fire going keeping the house warm. Um, smoke goes by every now and then. Chimney's just off to my right on the other side of the roof here. So Sue's handing me up the rails. These are uh, XR100 from Iron Ridge. They make an XR10, XR100, and XR1000. And the higher the number, the longer the span they're capable of. So depending on your snow load and your span required would, would dictate which model you need. So you'd really want to call your distributor and, and find out you know how to size this appropriately or look at the calculators on Iron Ridge's website. We're putting our feet pretty close together, so XR100 is going to span that no problem. So we're just tidying up the last couple feet here, installing them after we get the rails in, so we know they're where we want them, and then you know we'll judge everything else based on this one. And in a minute here, you'll see we'll go get a uh, pallet of modules on the tractor. We only bring up the eight we need at a time and get them picked up onto the roof. And that way we just don't have any excess up there. Nothing can fall, nothing to go wrong. The modules are pretty tough. I've dropped one before from a pretty you know high altitude and not had a big problem. Usually what gets the modules is if they land on something like a screw head or, or something sharp pokes them because they are a form of a safety glass. So you'll see we're able to pick the tractor, you know, pick the forks up on the tractor and lift them right up on the roof because this edge of the roof is so low to the ground. And the bag there has just got all the UFO bolts in it. So we want to stop, start at the top. And the reason we want to do that in our case is that we're, uh, we have a couple different brands of modules and we want them to all line up. So if you were doing this, you know, normally you'd probably start at the bottom and line your panels all up but just to keep everything symmetrical at the top we're starting at the top so you'll see I put in the two UFO bolts I go down and get another module come up slide it in place and, and tighten up those two UFO bolts pretty quick process the uh, the UFO bolts are like a T-bolt and they drop down into the groove in the Iron Ridge rail and turn about a 
not even a quarter of a turn, probably more like an eighth of a turn, and then they come up and grab the rail, and everything locks right into place. And they have a uh, grounding washer on the top of them that bites into the aluminum of the module and grounds it to the rail. And then the rails, of course, are all bonded with uh, the proper grounding clamps and ground wire back to the system ground. So we're just going to keep going here. We're going to get our eight modules up. You know, we come back and deal with the wire management later on this one. You, we don't show that. There's a, a lot of different ways to do wire management. In this case, we're using a good quality wire tie that we get at our electrical supply house. And we just come back up, reach up under there, and take care of the wire management. So we're getting our next set of feet on for our next set of rails. And I believe our camera battery goes dead here at some point, and you miss Sue and I up on the roof. She came up and uh, ran the impact in the UFO bolts while I lugged modules. So I think you, you miss that on a couple rows, and then we get back to the last row. But in a minute here, she'll hand me up a rail, and we'll get our rail installed. And you'll notice I got a little silicone on one of my feet, so it's it's a little slippery. Anybody that knows anything about silicone, once you get it on something, it's slippery. So. We're just sitting here making a plan, talking about what we need to do to keep going and uh, getting her up on the roof here in a minute. So she's going to take the tractor and go back in and get ready to get more modules, and I'm going to finish up the rails. And the bolts that hold the rail to the L foot have to be slid in from the top or the bottom. So you'll notice when I started up top, I slid into a three. And then when I got ready to go down bottom, I slid a few up from the bottom. And I put those in. And then what I did is I went back and put my bonding screws into the splice kit after I got my rails installed. Right there, you see me putting the bonding screws in. And then we're going to go get ready, and we're going to get some more modules. So I'm just getting everything lined up here, ready, and... Uh, there you see the battery went dead and we're back. We have three rows of modules in and we're started on our fourth row. So, same thing, bolting the feet down. We had a pretty good system going near the end of it. We would drill all of our holes, silicone all of our holes, and then we'd go back and screw all of our feet down and then we'd drag the rail up, put it in place, bolt it down. In our case, being a, a trust roof and all new construction, we didn't need to pull strings or anything on these rails. We left all of the rails down to the very bottom of the L foot groove, and that kept everything uniform and flat. If you had an older house or you know something like that, you might want to pull strings across the top and the bottom and a couple places in the middle so that you get your array nice and flat. So when you stand down and look at it, you don't have lips and you know edges and stuff. It also helps with the snow sliding off in our climate. Uh, as soon as the sun comes out a little bit, the snow just sheds right off all these modules, comes crashing down off the roof. So here what I'm doing is I'm putting in some quarter inch stainless bolts to hold the microinverters. Iron Ridge makes a nice T-bolt that goes in from the top and turns like that eighth of a turn that holds the microinverter. I forgot to order those, so I'm using a quarter inch stainless steel bolt that's about three quarters of an inch long lock washers and nuts and just putting our microinverters on. So we're going to get those all mounted and then we're going to come put our trunk cable on and dress that all up. And as I mentioned we're using some good I think a 3M black wire ties that we get from our electrical supply house. We're putting extra on you know because we're hoping these modules will be here for a good long time. So we're taking up the slack in the wire tying it up in good shape and wire management is probably one of the uh, most pain in the butt things of a roof mount system. Um, these guys that do this every day professionally are really good at it and they uh, they have a lot of tricks if you will. So there's a lot of good videos out there on how to do that. We're in hopes that we don't have to touch this again for a long time so we put extra wire ties on and dressed it all up. So we're just going to finish up the wire management on the microinverters, 
we'll come back um, you won't see it in this video but we will come back and slide a piece of uh, conduit over those wires in under the array they're all tied up under the array and here we're just connecting our modules dressing our module leads and then bolting our module down put a couple UFO bolts in for the next module again working from the top down to keep all the tops lined up and it's kind of interesting you'll notice uh, the difference in shades of blue and they're all the same brands of modules um, it's funny how the the shades vary like that but anyways that's gonna basically wrap up this video we're just about done here we're getting a couple more UFO bolts so we appreciate you watch, watching if you got any questions don't be afraid to leave them down below and we'll do our best to answer them so come back and watch the next part of this series where we show you how we get these wires into the power shed and then we'll uh, continue on from there inside the power shed and there's a good example those two modules are you know a little difference in color they look a lot closer in person so